Lamborghini versus Ferrari. I'm in Italy today. I go to the museums for both, and I'm gonna tell you which one you can't miss. Driving north from Florence to Milan, Italy, it's about three hours, and you pass through the Emilia Romagna area, which is home to the Italian automotive industry that features Ferrari and Lamborghini. Now, I'm here in Maranello, which is just outside the town of Modena, and I'm going to visit the first of four museums. That's right, four museums featuring Ferrari and Lamborghini. This is the Museo Ferrari. I had a day in this region and I was surprised to find out there were two Ferrari museums and you can buy one pass that gets you into both. I believe it was about 15 or 18 euros. This particular museum, the Museo Ferrari, specializes more in the automotive and racing side of Ferrari, but it has some fantastic exhibits. As you go through this exhibit, you're gonna see some beautiful cherry red Ferraris from the GTOs that were popular in the 1980s, to the F40s and F50s that were popular in the 90s that I grew up with. There is certainly a focus on racing in this particular museum, and you can go and read every placard on the wall that talks about both the development of the cars and the races that were won. The highlight of this museum is the room I'm showing here. In the middle, you have these engine blocks, which you can get right up close to. And you also have these F1 cars on display, and you get to see the progression of the F1 cars. And many of these cars won races. You can walk by and see everything. There's trophies on the wall that you can observe from a distance. You're not gonna touch anything in this museum. You're not gonna get in any cars, but the exhibit itself is really cool. After you leave, you head through this room and see some of the old classics from the days of Enzo Ferrari. And you can follow a little timeline as well and read more in depth if you want. This museum was great, but it was also small. There wasn't a whole lot to see here. I spent about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes. And you could have blitzed through this museum in maybe 20 minutes if you were in a hurry. Soon enough, you get to the end, you can ride some simulators if you really want to spend some extra money. But ultimately, I was anxious to get to the next Ferrari Museum. About 20 kilometers away in downtown Modena is the Enzo Ferrari Museum that you see here. I like this museum. It focuses more on the street cars and it definitely scratches a different itch. It's not all about the racing. It's more about the cars that you see on the street and the history of Ferrari. You see a lot of these old classics. However, most of the cars are just in this large exhibit that is housing about 16 different vehicles. And once you've been in here about 10 or 15 minutes, you've kind of seen most of what there is to see in this museum. You can only gawk at these cars for so long. Again, you can't get in any of these cars. And you can go to a different nearby room, which showcases the various different engines. And I really like seeing these up close. It's definitely worth walking in here and taking a look at how the engines have progressed over the years. There is one building immediately adjacent that has a smaller exhibit that takes you on another timeline. You get to see some cool cars, but this museum is kind of small as well. Ferrari, I think, would be better served if these were combined into one museum. As it is, you gotta go and drive 20 minutes between both museums, and you don't really wanna miss one. I think they both are pretty equal. I probably prefer the first one, the Museo Ferrari, over the Enzo Ferrari Museum, but they're both pretty close. This is the Moody Tech Museum, located at the headquarters of Lamborghini, which is about 20 minutes outside of Modena, between Bologna and Modena, actually in kind of a rural area. Now you do have to park across the street, but as you come into the lobby, immediately you kind of get the presence of Lamborghini and you buy your tickets, and then you're in for a nice surprise.
right out of the gate. They send you into this room and they play this high energy video for you in a dark room with flashing lights. It really sets the mood, gets the adrenaline going, and you are ready to see some Lamborghinis after watching this clip. One thing to know is you are at the factory. In fact, you may see factory workers walking around outside. You can register for a factory tour, but it's extremely hard to get in in the days post COVID. They've really limited the numbers. If you know you're gonna be here weeks in advance, you can try to register on the website. For the rest of us, the museum itself is still pretty cool. They've got a great mix of old school Lamborghinis as well as some modern Lamborghinis and the setup, the building, the architecture, as well as the displays are really well done here. I think it's really cool looking up close at these engines and transmissions and just seeing the workmanship and the technology of these things. In case you're wondering, all the exhibits are in both Italian and in English. You can just read right along. From the outside, this building looked very ordinary. In fact, you have to park across the street, and it looks like this is just a glass office building connected to the factory. But on the inside, this building is magnificent. It's very well done. They've put a lot of time and effort into the interior design. It really matches the personality of Lamborghini. I love the big windows and the natural light flooding into this place. In the afternoon sun, the cars look terrific. And there were more cars here than in either of the Ferrari museums. You can obviously go around. I love this one where you can gaze right into the interior. They've got a glass display there. Although I didn't get it on camera, I did have a great conversation with one of the workers here at the museum. Her name was Juliana, and she mentioned a few interesting things. One was the factory produces about 23 Lamborghinis a day. Ultimately, they sell about 8,000 Lamborghinis a year worldwide. The workers come from the surrounding communities, Bologna, Modena, and this area is somewhat rural. The factory is definitely located in a rural area, but the community and the workers take a lot of pride. They've been making these for generations, and they take a lot of pride in their workmanship, knowing that they're building some of the most amazing sports cars in the world. She said something like 70 to 80% of the households in the region have somebody that works in the automotive community, whether an engineer or a designer. Along with Lamborghinis and Ferraris, you also have Maseratis and Ducati motorcycles that are built in this region. It's definitely an area that knows a thing or two about performance vehicles. And of course, if you wanna try out a Lamborghini simulator, they have that as well. You can jump on it for a few euros. Finally, heading now to the last museum of the day, the Ferruccio Lamborghini Museum, located near Bologna. Now, this is about 20 kilometers directly east of the previous museum, the Muditech Lamborghini Museum. Special thanks to the host who let me in even as they were closing because they were preparing for an event, but they did let me walk around for about 15 minutes and take some videos and look at things. This museum had really a different feel than not only the other Lamborghini Museum, but the two other Ferrari museums that I was at earlier today. They all were so different. This place had a lot of different tractors and different vehicles that were associated with Lamborghini. This museum didn't feel nearly as high-tech or as advanced as the other museums. It almost felt like it was done a little bit on a budget. In fact, the building itself felt like a repurposed office space or warehouse space. 
that said, despite it not being as high tech or as fancy, there were more vehicles here than in any of the other museums that I visit today. And I liked a lot of these cars. A lot of them were from the 70s. And you did have some from the 80s and 90s, but there weren't nearly as many modern Lamborghinis. I was a bit surprised to see a vintage Ford Mustang on display here in this museum. And along with that, I was also surprised to see a Lamborghini speedboat, not something that I expected to find in the Ferruccio Lamborghini Museum. So I've been to the Lamborghini and the Ferrari museums, and I've got a few opinions. First of all, none of them are very big. These are half hour museums, which is not so bad. Uh, you know, not, none of them compare to like the Mercedes or the BMW Museum. They're not huge. They don't, I know the Mercedes Museum, I felt like I needed three hours inside to see everything. And that's not the case with these. They all kind of have a different feel to them. And quite frankly, I don't know that you want to miss one of these. There, there's some cool stuff at each one. If I had to pick just one, I would say the Lamborghini Muda Tech Museum is the best of the four. It's the most modern. I thought it was the highlight. If I was going with the Ferrari Museum and had to pick one, I would probably choose the Museo Ferrari in Maranello. That said, if you're passing through this part of Italy, you can hit all four of these museums in half a day. It would be easy to plot and plan that out. And if you love cars like I do, you may as well just go to all four.